So, we are here to talk about the new show on the CW. You know, we went through Resident Alien. It was time for a new show. And the CW had one for us called Kung Fu. It is a reimagining of the classic series, which Bangman has actually watched. I somewhere. watched about three episodes. Uh, the way it starts off in the original show is you have David Carradine as a younger kid, probably, and is probably 12 or 10 years old. He's, he's, he's early teens. Uh, flashbacks, you know, and, and he stood outside this little Shaolin monk temple. He was an orphan. He's, you know, he didn't know where to live with. He didn't know where to live with. And out of all the kids that they were allowed in, he was the one that was the most well-behaved, so he was allowed to stay there, and they trained him. Uh, and there's several different masters. And yes, these are all different guys, you know, back then, you know, because that's what it was. Um, that was just the way the culture is. Mm -hmm. uh, so each had different crane style, different fighting style, well, you know, just different stuff. You'd see, like, if you probably watch Kung Fu Panda, there's different people, you know, different move specialists. Yes, I know that's a stretch. Did you Kung Fu Panda? From the company that brought you Shrek, yes. we will talk about Kung Fu and Kung Fu Panda. I don't yes. think people want that. Uh, we're here to talk about the show, Kung Fu, but, which is the imagining of that yes. classic series. Yes. And anyway, so yeah, this guy ends up you know, going into the world and starts, you know, just being accused of killing his master. And now in the reboot, it's a lot different. Uh, they do keep some of the elements the same. This time, it's a girl who's probably uh, in her was in her late? It was really, she actually early been out of high school. Early twenties. She's out of, see, out of high school. See, she she, gra she graduates from uh, high school. She dropped out of college. She was going to college when her mother, uh, May Lee, sent her daughter Nikki to China uh, for a cultural immersion. She said, but it was mm -hmm. actually to get her to meet her new husband because she had arranged a marriage. Nikki wasn't a fan of this, and so she ran away. She panicked. Mm -hmm. uh, she ends up hiding in this truck where her where uh, a woman by the name of Pei Ling mm -hmm. uh, is basically dropping off groceries, and she asks Pei Ling, please don't, uh, please don't let them know I'm here. And Pei Ling says that she can be whatever she wants to be, and that strikes with Nikki. This leads to her basically taking her to a uh, trying to remember Shaolin Temple. Sha Shaolin Temple, yes, Shaolin Temple, yes. Yeah. Located in the on top of this huge cliff, like based in you know, where way from everywhere. It was just it was a desolate area. Uh and she stayed there for the next three years training and learning and uh from uh and and get this. Well, it's all women. It's a it's a sanctuary apparently for women to get away and uh, I guess become a better version of themselves. Uh, it was as I said, it's a lot different than the, the original one. The original one, you know, uh, in the series, he befriended a guy, one of the masters, you know, and and he basically uh, it was I guess it was much more tougher. We didn't see much of it. It was kind of like you could see about a little bit, you know, her doing some moves. We didn't, you know, because. In the original series, David Carradine, when he finally left the temple, he, in order to leave, there was a mechanism. There was a burning uh, fire pit. And he had to lift up his arms, carry it, and set it onto the other mechanism, open the doors, a lot of the doors open up, because he's up on top of a mountain. So when he did this, he had, like, imprints, like, uh, burns, from, like, a dragons and stuff on his arms. So everybody knew that you were a student, you were from there. So he, and he puts his hands into the snow. You know, and and he needs walks. They didn't say how he got away, you know. Or, but a year later, it was when his he meets that that one of the masters he met, not the headmaster, but one of the guys. This guy's blind, and and his that like his friend is murdered, and he he murders the guy who actually turned to be like an emperor, son of an emperor, you know, in China at the time. This is like, this is during the Wild West when it's when this you know when the show is supposed to, you know. But uh, anyway, this series oh. is a, yeah, this sorry, is just a lot different. This is this is modern age. This is current. I uh, during the middle of the night, they are their temple is attacked by raiders, who have, it turns out they come there for a, a sacred sword. Uh, Nikki, who fights her way after waking up, fights her way to find her master on the ground, and this other woman stabbing her her master 
through the heart with a sword. Yeah. And she goes there. She's like, hold on. I'll call, call, I'll call the paramedics. I'm like, you're in the middle of no. <laughs> it kind of threw me off. I was like, I'll call. I'm like, no, no. It take them forever, even a fight for life. Um, so she ends up, her, her master's like, no, don't worry about it. Go get the sword. The sword's more important. And you'll get, you know, let her get away and escape. Avenge me. She confronts the lady. Uh, and actually, actually, out, I, out uh, martial arts, you know, out, 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 out does her. Not, manages to knock the sword away using her staff. Because apparently this must be her favorite weapon of choice is using a staff. We've seen her practice with it. We've seen her use it in this fight. We've seen her use it later on. We use a uh, staff like objects. Uh, she knocks the sword out. She goes to pick the sword up. And immediately the handle burns her hand. And the lady says, like, you fool. You think you could wield the power of that sword? You can't. So you're, you're pathetic. And now you're going to die because of it. Because you could, because you wouldn't leave things to go. And they're fighting. And she kicks Nikki off the cliff. And they're like, bye, Nikki. It shows over, I guess. The end. <laughs> I, I, I was joking with the person I was watching with uh, at the same time. And I was like, okay, that's it. Good show. Let's move on. But, we, we, of course, we pan, the camera pans on. You see Nikki hanging on by two uh, her hands. Hold on. She's trying to get her footing up. And then we get a narration that she's like, yo, uh, yeah, uh, I was, I searched for this lady for like, for several months, you know, finally I had to go, I had to do the thing I, only I love to do. I came home, I confronted my family, and cue the Full House music as I see the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco from the clouds. Yeah, Somebody um, who needs you. <laughs> we are quickly introduced to uh her dad uh jin shin great uh, guy for a daughter has been missing for three years or just didn't come oh home. yeah she, because he opens the door and he's like nikki and he's, he he's, hugs her it's so good to see you he, he is so such a sentimental man he is so happy to see his daughter he doesn't care he's he's, he's a guy he's like he's like you know what family's family what he's like he's like uh astra's father from as an alien no matter what mm -hmm. happens what you do Family is family. Uh, of course, we find out this is kind of like not really the case because uh, <laughs> she goes to meet her other her other her brother who works at the clinic. And it turns out that he and uh, he came out and said he is gay to his family, and they kind of shunned him a little bit. Mm -hmm. now, and kinda... so the only person who knew who really accepted it, Nikki, left. Yeah, left. What's going on? And he he hates her for this. You know, he just like you know you. He throws a little drama temper tantrum when she first comes to the house, and then later at the clinic, she's like, you know, it's like I'm very busy. She's like, well, how about we go play ping pong unless you're chicken, you know? Uh, they, they bond, they fix things because that's what this main episode is. But before they, before, yeah, but before they go out, they start bonding. She come across this guy named Henry, this cute guy who she's kind of like, oh, hi Henry, how's it going? Uh, and she's like, you want to hang out? Go, like, oh, we discuss the time. Let's go. Yeah, she's like, sure. Much to uh. Her brother uh, Ryan's, or I said, I said, yeah, he is Ryan. Brother Ryan's uh, annoyed because he's like, oh, whatever. He's like, we don't know. Maybe he likes Evan. <laughs> but they go play ping pong, and they're and they're going back. And she explains what happened, everything she's going on, and he, of course, he wins. But they they basically, and she asked, yeah, she asked about the whole thing. She says, like, yeah, I came out to dad, mom and dad, but you know, I was all alone. You abandoned me. I felt so, you know, you could have called me. Or at least said, I was like, no. But they hug it out, so it's all good. But speaking of the mother, uh, well, before I get to the mother, we should say that th her sister, uh, uh, Al Althea? Um, I, think I think it's Althea, yeah. She is getting married. Um, and right. she is so excited to have her sister back. And she asked her dad, do you, do do you, you remember coming? And then the dreaded moment comes. Well, before this, I want to do <laughs> the funny thing she says, like, don't worry, it's just going to be a small wedding. It's like, it's, it's going to be to us and then 200 guests. 200 <laughs> guests and <laughs> so, a fortune teller. That's what she says. Yes, yes. Uh, but then Mei Li Shen, the mother, walks into the room and uh, Jin says, uh, Mei Li, your daughter is home. And Meili looks at Nikki for a moment and says, well, just, "My sorry. daughter died three years ago," and walks out of the room. The, yeah, the mother is just so upset to the fact that the 
yeah, that that she she she, she, she even, even had a talk. She says like, you know what? I spent all this money. You, I, I accepted you. You dropped out of college and all that stuff, and then you do you insult me like this, you know, by by not talking to me. Like, what what, what was so wrong? He's like, she's like, mom, you tried to like arrange a marriage when I had a boyfriend. Yep. Yeah, it's like um. It, actually, a funny moment is after she leaves, Althea, uh, Althea says, that one better than I expected. Uh, but the interactions are key in this episode. Uh, the plot line leads us down to uh, her father later on as she's mm -hmm. trying to find out information about the sword, which is shown with these cool, um, these cool quick animation cuts. Yeah. Uh, that basically whenever they're telling a story of ancient Chinese history, uh, well, at least for the show, um, it is shown. She's walking down the street and she notices two people beating up an old man. Not only any old man, but her father, uh, Jin Shin. And it's because he owes money to a man named uh, Tony uh, Kong. Mm -hmm. And it's... He's part of the triad. We find that out. Oh yes, and he controls uh, not only the the police but everyone in there. He, he's running a racketeering you know, thing, extortion, all that stuff. Money, 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 money. Yes, indeed. I don't uh, think he was going money, money, money. <laughs> That's right. That's what he's doing? <laughs> Don't you remember that? <laughs> Dan Zemo, move over. <laughs> uh, but, uh, it, it does lead them to try and find out information. Uh, so they're going and looking for other people who have ha had experience with uh, Tony Kong. Uh, it's pretty quick scenes, uh, them going through Chinatown. Coming to and, the 99 cent store with the, her the herbal's cousin, who's rarely had a reason to had a shakedown. And uh, <laughs> yes. And this is where uh, she goes there, and I think he goes there, and she, she walks inside, starts to confront a lady, telling her, like, hey, I, I grew up here, and all this stuff, and all and all. Uh, my family is, you know, being harassed with this too. Like, you know, I and I, I just want to help. You know, anything we can do. We can, I, she's like, I have people that can help us too. And and while they're doing, it, all of a sudden, these triad uh, triad uh, gang members come up. Two thugs outside. Her brother and her and her sister are out there, and are like, um, okay, just backing away. Nikki runs out there, and we start getting kung fu. Fists are flying. Fists are flying, knives are flying, guns are flying. Uh, and knives, yes. This was, like I said, this was actually really good, uh, seen here. Um, yeah, I mean, some people would be like, well, it was kind of slowed down. It was, you know, it could have been better. It's kind of hokey, you know, like, you know. Dude, I thought it for what it was, it was great. It fit well. And for those who Did you who, think it was better the, than Cobra uh, Kai? Cobra Kai is a lot more stuff, you know, a lot more violence, obviously, uh, than this. I mean, you do hear bones crunching, but you don't see blood coming out of the nose. People, yeah. So Cobra Kai, in that sense, and some of their stuff, well, yeah, was kind of. But you can tell it's choreography, you know, choreography, you know, doing it is fighting. Yeah. You know, there's no one really leaving any contact, you know, hits on each other. I mean, it looks like it is. That's a camera angle. Yes. Uh, but no, it was a really good fight scene. Um, but that basically leads them to saying they're all in danger now. Um, but it, at that moment when they're at home and they're discussing... Well, well this, no, this, is, this is before it all. So they go home. Remember, you're skipping a part. The lady goes down to the shop, police shop and she's and they, they talk to uh, Evan, her ex, uh, Kim's... Or, that's right. The DA. Uh, yeah, Nikki's, Nick, yeah, Nikki's ex-boyfriend. He's the DA. And he gave him all the information. And I was like, you know, yeah, we, you can get him now. He's like, well, no, this isn't enough at all because this guy, we've had charges got it brought against him before and he gets out of it. And so, and, it, and, she, and she's like, there's nothing else. We're like, well, we have these folders here and stuff, you know, but they're like, you know, stuff. they're in you know, Chinese, and, you know, we only have one translator. And he's not that good. She's like, hello, my family's freaking Chinese. We speak Chinese. Like, if you want us to do it's like, it's like, can't, it's illegal. She's like, really? You're, it's, you know, you're going to let this guy, like, and finally he caves. He's like, okay. Ah, and this is where Rob would probably be like, well, I guess he still likes her. You know, he's bending over back. It's where even though he's got a new girl, he hasn't moved on. It was just kind of true. And then I really don't, and I kind of hope they don't go down that route where Austin, he's like, we're going to, 
hey, I dumped my girlfriend. You want to get back together? Because they're setting her up for this other guy, Henry, who she kind of like already likes moving on. And I don't need the drama triangle. It's like, well, your ex-boyfriend's out in the picture, and here's a new one. It's, yeah. Like, for CW is famous for team and teen angst like that. Anyway, getting back to the point. She takes home the documents. They start going through all the uh, all the stuff. And and he comes with them at her house. And he's like, oh, man. It's like, you know, it's like back being like, you know, back in the day. It's like, you know, you know, pe- you know doing all the stuff, doing research. And, uh, and... Uh, I forgot what her sister, Althea, Althea says, like, I got it. He's like, what do you mean? I, I hacked into his bank account. So he's like, oh, she's like, well, you do what? It's like, yeah. And, 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 and I love how the brother is like, Ryan's like, well, she's not just a pretty nice member. She's pretty smart. So, so, anyway, so they find out that there's a lot of, a lot of exchanging of money and, and all and stuff, uh, documents go, they're talking about the docs. Mm-hmm. And, and they're like, oh, that could be anything. It's, it's just, it's, they say, like, that could be human smuggling, that could be guns, it could be tr- drugs, you know, or all three. And we said, we need to do something. He's like, no, I'm not, uh, the DA is like, you know, Evan's like, I'm going, I'm going, right. Yeah, yeah, Evan's the DA. Yeah, I'm going to uh, let the cops know, the, you know, the rest of my buddies know. He's like, and Ryan's like, her brother's like, no, we've been on this road before. You guys are on the payroll. There's, we can't trust you guys. We're going to take it in our own hands. We're going to get the evidence that we need. You know the hard, mm-hmm. the hard evidence. So we cut to the hospital scene because we see that because uh, the real reason they're the re- they're trying to get this the Tony Khan off the street because he threatened her their parents. He said he'd kill the dad in seventy two hours if he didn't get a hundred thousand dollars because well because the, remember the mother borrowed and then the dad borrowed. Yep. So it increased the increased the interest. So they go to visit the, the two daughters go to visit the father you know in there and they have a little moment there and. The mom comes in, and this is actually, I think this is also where we found out that the mom had originally had borrowed money, you know, and the dad did too. Kind of like, this is a sad scene. Because um, we only, only knew was that he had 72 hours to live. We didn't know why, but, you know, he's going to kill him. So mm-hmm. now we know why. Um, so they go back out, and they're like, well, where's, where's, uh, where's Ryan? Was that, you like, well, she's like, I tried to call the clinic, but he just rang. He wasn't there, you know. And he's like, you don't think. She's like, hold on. Let me, I'll, make, I'll, make, I'll see where his phone, I'll check his phone. Like, she's like, what? You check his phone? It's like, well, you disappeared. I don't want to lose my brother, too. <laughs> so she, it's kind of, where's my iPhone app on his phone? And, of course, it's at the dock. She's like, no, no, no. What are you doing there, you idiot? You know, I'm like, my thoughts exactly. Um, so we get to see him up on the industrial park, and he's, like, Peter Parkering it. Get the giant camera. I'm going to take photos. Uh, Golly, jeez. <laughs> Miss Lane will be happy for these photos, the exclusives. <laughs> you did good, Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> but no, uh, Nikki goes there and basically tries to get him out. But they are noticed. and It is too late. However, uh, they fend off uh, Kong's uh, security team. Yep. And they're, they manage to go after uh, Kong himself. When th- this leads to the, I don't know if I'd say the best fight scene, but uh, it was a really good fight scene. It was just one on one. The climax and, to the to the episode. Oh yeah, uh, she she takes down the triad leader with all all kinds of styles, and uh, she, she uses the rebar as a staff again, as I pointed out earlier. Stick fighting, yeah. So she's she's good at using that, you know, and for her size. They kind of, she needs an equalizer going against a guy, you know, even if you didn't have a gun. And then they, but again, it's like, I'm not one of those people that says, like, well, a girl needs to have a weapon in order to fight against a guy who's twice her size. No. no, I don't believe that crap. It's all, I, about I, how, it's all about how they fight. Yes. Um, if you are smaller than your opponent, then You're, you, you can move faster. Use, yeah, you, you have to use what you have against them the best you can. Um, and she manages to do it. Uh, it is hard for a moment because Kong does actually get a hit, and it knocks down Nikki. But she gets a. There's one element we haven't talked about. When she comes home, she's the premonitions. What's she all the time <laughs> around town? Oh, in the window, I see my master talking to me. Are you okay? Are you okay? I just gotta ask. 
Well, she was stabbed in the shoulder, remember, by that sword. So maybe yeah. that's why she's seeing things. The master Ooh, was also stabbed like by the sword. attachment kind of deal. I I don't know. Um, but they managed to take down the bad guy. That, that's pretty. That's pretty much. We well, also point out their hand was also branded by these Chinese symbols. Once you grab the sword, that's all they all, they find out more information about it later on. Yeah, I remember when Henry asked, "Can I see your hand?" It could help. It could lead to a clue. <laughs> um, Did you see my disfigured hand? Oh my gosh! Why? <laughs> so, this, at the end of this, there is a special ceremony. Um, well, well, before this, uh, uh, she sees a permission of her master, and then, but then, I don't know if it was her, if her, it was her master. Kind of looked like somebody new. Um, remember the sword? Will, you know, the sword will be it will be used by its master, original master. And I think it, you're seeing maybe I'm maybe I'm, I'm just reading the things wrong, but I thought it was a flashback of the original sword bearer person who actually was guarding the sword, the first person who created the temple and all stuff, the whole order of Shaolin Temple. I think her spear was challenging through her, and that's why she was able to do like the jumping move through the air and able to do that and you know, defeat uh, Khan, knock him out, leaving him for the cops. But mm -hmm. that being said, getting to yes, we get we get to the little ceremony going on for her for Althea and they're choosing a date by their and they're all in their oriental dress and all that stuff. And uh, and I'm not really familiar with the culture, so I'm not gonna really talk about it that much because I didn't do any research on it. Didn't have yeah. enough time. Um, that being said, this was yeah. So, um, what we, I talk we, about with Henry, Henry pulls yeah. her aside, and I'll let you take us out with that. Oh, okay. Well, um, basically, he go goes to her, and <laughs> at first he's a little. Uh, Taken with how uh, beautiful she looks in her uh, garments, uh, but he quickly gets to the point that the sword that burned her hand, the secret sword of the uh, monastery, was ba is basically one of eight special weapons that was enchanted by an ancient Chinese sorcerer. If someone collects all eight weapons, there's no telling what kind of damage that they could cause on the world. Um, and it ends with us seeing the villain, uh, Zylan, I believe her name is. Zylan or something? I can't remember. Is there a hand? Something like that, and apologize for us butchering names. Um, but she has this special bookcase, moves it aside, puts up the sword, and there are spots for eight, for sorry, seven more weapons. Yep. And that's where the episode ends. Uh, overall, it was interesting. Um, at first, I was a little uh, skeptical about it because as soon as it started getting into the uh, get, getting into mystical stuff, I was like, "Are we sure we should?" This was supposed to be about kung fu, but later on, they they wow. showed. There's some real martial arts getting in there, uh, and I kind of, I kind of glad they added the supernatural kind of elements to because, like I said, unlike the original show, it's just him just wandering and just like never wanted to fight, but people were coming in to try to bring him back to China, so he was forced to fight at the end of the episode or help somebody, and all was like that. That was that was that that was the thing for that. But I mean, it was more drama and more like he was a Buddhist, he's a Buddhist monk. And that's what these are supposed to be too, but you know, but she's where she is. She's getting they put a different spin on it, a different more action oriented plot, which I kind of like. Yeah, um, it gives her a it gives her a goal, and that's yes. important. It gives her a villain first off, and, and instead off. of just instead of just wandering from one uh, old west town to the next. I mean, for those who are fans of the original show, I I have nothing against that. I mean, as would you guys like? I just if I felt it's kind of slow. I, I'm more of an action guy. I like martial arts. So as you've seen on the on this channel, we've seen kicking it on Extreme Movie Show. So yeah. I am looking well, forward to more of this though. And I'm interested in seeing where it goes. And uh, I look forward to continuing down this journey next week. With that being said, I guess Pixel. It's the only one I think to say. Stay straight.